Hi, George here. And in this project, we'll be doing this face on a tree effect right here. And this requires several steps. Each one of the steps doesn't look that exciting, but you put them all together and it does a great effect. Okay, start off with a brand new file. Let me just close this down, get that out of the way. Here's our basic tree image. And we also have this picture right here for the face. And the first thing I want to do is to make a new file, file new, blank file. I'll put this at the Photoshop Elements size right there, which is a six by four at 300 resolution, choose OK. And I'll just dock that image right there. There we go. Let's take our images here as floating windows. And we're going to be copying those into our working document right back here. Now, if you don't have floating windows, just go up here to edit, come down to preferences right here and general. And it's that checkbox right there, allow floating documents in expert mode. Make sure that that's checked. Choose OK and you're all set. The reason why I like this is that you can then just grab that background layer, drag it onto your new project, and there it is. Same thing over here, we'll do that with this image. There we go. Okay, I'll put this one at the bottom like that. And let's hide the face just right now. And let's just resize this a little bit here. I'll grab the corner down there and I'll make it a pretty good size. The bigger it is, the better the face is going to show up. But you don't want to go too large or you'll be losing some of that building in the background, which I think is also important for the overall look. There we go, I think that's about right. Okay, let's now bring the face back in. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to about halfway so I can see that face in there. And this is adjusted so that's a pretty good size. I think right about there. Looks good. And put the opacity back up again. Okay, now we want to just have just the face out of this. There are several ways you can do that. It's really up to you on which method you use. I'm just going to make a layer mask for this. So we'll zoom in. And an easy way here is just use the polygonal lasso tool and set this to a new selection. I'll put the feathering at one. We're gonna soften it down later anyway, but I'll put the feathering at one for right now. And then come in just a little ways like this, just away from that edge. And let's just go around here. Now I don't want to have his ear in here, but I want the jawline. Hold the space bar down to move things. So I'll pull this right down here until we get down to the jawline. And then I'll follow the jawline around fairly closely. I'll be inside just a little bit on that. And let's just work around here and get the whole face selected. We'll again come back and adjust this a little bit in just a couple of moments here. And I'll come in right here, right along that edge here. I'm Staying away from that white on the headdress as much as I can. And bring it right up around. And there's his hair right here. And then again, not quite up to that headdress right there. And then back around to the beginning. There we go. Hit the layer mask button. Let's go to the zoom tool. Put this back to fit screen. And there's the basic face position. Now I want to soften the edge up a little bit, and I also want to fix this bit right down here in this side just a touch. We'll do both of those over here on the layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline, you should see that. If you see that, then we're okay. If not, just double click on that layer mask. Go up here to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur. Give it just a little bit of a blur. That just softens down that edge a touch. Let's say maybe seven's pretty good here on that. Choose okay. And we're still on the layer mask side, so I'm going to grab my paintbrush. Black hides, white shows. I want to hide a little bit here. My size here is 45 pixels, and that looks pretty good. And let's zoom in. I just want a little bit of a cleanup on the left-hand side. There's our paintbrush. And I'm just going to paint it in, just bring it in just a bit here. And I'm painting right onto that layer mask. It's black on the layer mask. And I'll bring it in right down here. I really want to come in right up against those whiskers. Again, hold the space bar down to move the image. There we go. Just a little cleanup here of the layer mask. That looks nice. Let's check this side. A little bit of that white headdress showing in there. I'm just going to come in and paint right over that edge and clean that out. That's good. This side looks fine. Maybe a little bit right in there. Okay, that's good. Back to our fit screen. There's the basic face and the basic position. Now we need to begin working on the effect in here to make it look like it's actually 3D part of the 
trunk of the tree. Now for that, the first thing I wanna do here is just to convert this over to black and white. Make sure you're on the photo side, double click on that, look for your light blue outline, that's good. Then go up here to enhance, come down to convert to black and white, and I want a fairly contrasty one, and newspaper is pretty good for that. Choose OK. There we go. And now, over here, back to the layer mask side again, double click, hold the control key down, click on that layer, the image right here, and that makes a selection right at that layer mask. Let's now go over to the image side, double click, and then control C to copy. Let's now make a new file here, file, new, blank file. That should be the exact size for that. Choose OK. Here we go. Control V to paste that in, and there it is. Let's hide that background. We don't need that. And I want this just a little bit more contrasty, and I also want to blur this out just a little bit. So go up here to Enhance, and let's come down to Adjust Lighting and Levels. And I'll just bring in the white side just a bit here, and then darken down the midtones a little bit, kind of go back and forth on those. And that looks pretty good. It's just more contrasty than the original because you want to have good separation between the darks and the lights. That's what gives you the contour effect in here. Okay, I think that's good. Let's now blur this down just a bit, and that's filter. Come down to the blur and then the Gaussian blur right here. And I'm going to set this one just at three. Just a little bit of blurring, just begin to lose some detail. That's all you need. Choose OK. And let's now save this file out. This will become our displacement map. So file, save. It'll call it face displacement map, choose save. And there we go, we can now close that down. That's ready for us when we get to that point. Okay, now, control D to deselect and don't move your image again at this point. Leave your image exactly where it is or things won't line up properly. Let's hide that layer, come down to our background layer. Let's make a copy of the background layer, right click where the name is and duplicate layer. Choose okay. Is there a duplicate? Now go up to the layer mask up here on the portrait layer. Hold the Alt key down and pull straight down. That copies that layer down here. Now if I hide the background, you can see here we go. It's just in the exact same position and it's just the tree bark for that spot. And that's what you want. Let's come back down to that layer. And let's now do the displacement map on this layer. Okay, go up to Filter. Come down to Distort. And then Displace right here. The defaults are 10 and 10 and stretch to fit, repeat edges. You can leave all those as is, that's just fine. Choose okay. Here's where you're gonna be choosing that displacement map. We have ours right there and choose open. And there it is. You don't see much right now, but if I show and hide that, you can see that there was a displacement going on in there. So the texture now matches the face better. You can't see it here. This is just part of this whole effect. Like I said, it's a lot of little things that add up to a real nice effect. Any of the individual things don't look that exciting. So there we go. Displacement is ready to go. Now we can bring in the face, which is right here. On the face layer, we're gonna blend this into that layer below, and that's our blend mode. And come down to multiply, and there it is into the trunk. We now need to make this more visible. And for that, we're gonna be doing an adjustment layer. Go up here to layer, come down to adjustment layer, and a levels right here. Or it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. And then pull the white side in, and that lightens up the light part of the image. Just about like that. You want it so that the light part is just beginning to match the background tree. And then a the little gray line right here, a little gray slider control right here, just pull it to the right just a little bit, and that darkens down the mid-tones, and that brings back in some of the darks. You don't want to go too far, it begins to block up, but you want to come over unless it has some good richness in there in the darks. Okay, we're beginning to look better at this point. Let's come back onto that portrait layer here. I'm going to add a slight drop shadow just to put a bit of a shadow here on the right hand side of the face. And that's layer, layer style, style settings, drop shadow. And let's just move this down here, kind of lower left hand corner. This points to where the light source is. And let's bring our distance out a bit and the size out just a touch. 
bring the opacity up a little bit. And you can begin to see now how it's giving us some separation right in along that right hand side. That's what you're looking for is that separation. The distance pulls it out further and the size softens it down. And somewhere right around here looks pretty natural as if it's carved in. So that gives us that right side separation. That's good. Choose OK. We now need to increase the highlights in here. We don't really have them on this thing. So we need to bring in those highlights. We'll do that with a new layer. Go to the top layer up here. Click on the new layer button. Here's a brand new layer. Go over to your colors left hand side. Make sure that white is in the foreground. Grab your paintbrush. It's still in the soft brush. It's still the same size I used previously here. And I'm just going to paint in where the highlights should be. We should have some highlight right in here on the nose like that. There we go. We should have something right over the eye over here, a little bit more on this side. A little bit over this eye right in here. In the forehead area right here, just a little bit. Maybe a touch right there, not much. So I'm just painting in new highlights in here. If you're not sure where these should be, just look at the original image. You can then see where those should be. And just coming in and bringing back in some of that contour that we had in here. Moving our chin right down here. Okay, that's pretty good. A bit more contour happening now. Of course, it looks really strange right now. It's not really correct because we shouldn't be having all those white stuff on this image. So we need to blend this into the original picture. I'm going to put a little bit right here, I think, and a little bit right over here. There we go. Let's now blend this in. And first, we're going to make it just a little bit more solid in here. Notice my opacity is down to 24%, so I can paint in slowly this way and build up the values I want. It's not going to be giving me full opacity right away. And that gives you a lot more control that way. Okay, I think that looks better. Now let's blend this layer into the layer underneath. Go up here to the blend modes and come down to overlay. And there we go. It just brightens up those areas. I can keep on painting now on that layer. And because it's an overlay layer, this will just brighten it up as I go. A little more right in here. I think that's looking pretty good. There we go. A little bit there, a little bit right in here. Maybe a little bit right up around here. Okay, the face is looking really nice now. now. The last thing I want to do is just to increase the contrast for the whole picture. So we're on our top layer right now. Let's go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Don't check that checkbox. This will now apply to everything in our whole project. And I can brighten the whole project up here a bit by pulling the right hand side in a little bit. There we go. And let's pull the midtones back just a touch. Increase our blacks just a little bit. And that just increases the contrast. If you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. If you want to help support my channel so I can keep on making these videos, then consider purchasing my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Or you can do a super thanks on this video, or you can support me over on Patreon. All that stuff is there in the description. And I'll see you next time.